So welcome everybody to our Imbolc ritual for two, 2021. A couple of words before we get started. Um, it is, Imbolc is one of the four um, seasons. It's not just a day, it's the beginning of a season. In, and in the ancient um, Irish scheme of things, it was the beginning of spring. Um, and that's really shouldn't be surprising to those of us living in the South because things are already blooming. The birds have already gotten the message that they're supposed to be making nests and babies. Um, and it won't be long before things are blooming. What's, what's amazing about that is that Imbolc was the beginning of spring in Ireland, in the middle of the North Sea. Um, and yet there were things there that started to break forth at this time of the year as well. Much later, um, the, the goddess and then the saint named Brigid. The, tonight we're going to use the ancient Irish uh, pronunciation of her name, Breed. Um, spelled B-R-I-G, by the way. And the English, in, in, in England, her counterpart or the same goddess was called Brigantia. And uh, apparently her name meant something like um, the all-powerful and the almighty. You know, it's, there's nothing demure about that. This is a force and a power uh, to be reckoned with. Um, and so she is also attached to the season. Um, two of the four seasons are said to be celebrations of the tribe, and the other two seasons are said to be celebrations of the land. Um, and so Imbolc is the first celebration of the tribe. And so um, in, in, in many ways tonight, we want to bring our attention and our focus to our own grove and to all the people who join us when we gather, this is, this is in a sense, our tribe. And, and all of us, I think, would be uh, quick to say, oh, and our tribe is much larger than that. But it's a beginning place. Um, I've been uh, in, in the instructions earlier this week. I invited everybody to make a shrine to breed. And at, at various places in the ritual, um, we're going to be dedicating the various parts of what you may have on your shrine. Um, I have mine set up over here and I can't show it to you. I'm going to take a picture of it later and put it on the Facebook page. Um, but I have a statue of Breed in her three aspects, the, 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 the blacksmith, the creator, the maker of things, um, the healer and nurturer, um, and the woman of the, the goddess of justice for whom words are power. And words become things, and words declare what is righteous in the world. Um, and I have a candle, a brand new candle, ready to dedicate tonight as her candle for this year. I have a bowl to to um, to be her well. I have uh, a stone to be a healing stone, and I have my brat breed, um, a, a scarf that I've been using for this purpose for years. It's been sitting out on a holly bush in my yard for the last three nights, collecting rain and dew and so forth. I have, I can show you this, a three-armed cross of Bridget that I made years ago, I think in a cups gathering, and it's been on my altar um, ever since. And I have as an offering tonight, a cup of milk. Um, and so you may have all those things or some of those things or more than those things on your altar as well. And so as we go through the ritual, you're gonna be asked to hold and to touch um, various things that are on your shrine and we're literally going to be blessing and bringing that shrine into our ritual tonight. I'll also tell you that um, for the words of blessing tonight for these various things are all taken from um, blessings written by an Irish uh, poet and mystic John O'Donohue. I've been reading and loving his work for years and um, he, he passed away a few years ago unexpectedly in his 50s and left this amazing collection of, of works. And this particular book is simply called Blessings. And in, in the book, there is um, a, 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 a poem prayer called In Adoration of One of the Four Elements, Air, Fire, Water, and Earth. And we're going to use those tonight to bless the various things in our Bridget Shrine, our Breed Shrine, and um, things on our altar. All right, so before we get started, let me... Um, I put this out on the Facebook page, but let me remind everyone, and, and I'll say it again in, um, in the ritual itself, our intention tonight, 
our intention tonight. By the working of this ritual, we invite the healing, helping, and inspiring work of Breed and all the Ice Sheeta, the Ice Sheeta, the beings of the other world, into our lives and through our lives for the healing of our Mother Earth, our broken and divided nation, and individuals that we will name. And there'll be a time for us to call out the names of individuals that we wish to do um, some healing work for. I also want to uh, welcome out loud again, we have at least three um, visitors tonight for the first time, and we welcome you here. We hope that if you find this ritual tonight comforting, uplifting, strengthening, uh, inspiring, that you'll come back again next time, um, which will be in about six weeks for the spring equinox. Okay, so uh, without any other sort of preparatory words, let us begin. Tonight, our, I invite you all to, to settle, whatever that means for you. If you wish to stand, then stand. If you wish to sit, make sure that you're good and comfortable. <clears throat> and gently close your eyes and begin to focus on your breathing. This, the, the power of focusing on your own breathing is transformative and it can take us into altered spaces and that's what we're about to do we are about to move into altered space in breath and out breath in breath and out breath and let this opening poem in praise of air um, set the sacred space with the air that we breathe And Gretchen, you may start, please. Okay. Let us bless the air, benefactor of breath, keeper of the fragile bridge we breathe across. Air waiting outside the womb to funnel a first breath that lets us begin to be here, each moment drawn from its invisible stock. Vast neighborhood of the invisible where thought lives, entering us to put faces on things that would otherwise stay strange and leave us homeless here. Home of memory, where our vanished days secretly gather, receiving each glance, word, and act that fall from presence, taking all our unfolding in so that nothing is lost or forgotten. Reservoir of the future, out of which our days flow, ferrying their shadowed nights, the invisible generosity that brings us future friends and sometimes stones of sorrow on which our minds refine. Air along whose unseen path presence builds its quiet procession, sometimes in waves of sound, voices that can persuade every door of the heart, often in tides of music that absolve the, the cut of time source of the breath that enables flowers to flourish and calls the dark rooted trees to ascend and to blossom. Perfect emptiness for the minds of birds to map with vanishings. Womb of forms that shapes embraces to hold animal presence. Air makes the distance kind, opening pathways for the eye for each the affections of things, yet never lets its invisible geography come anywhere near thought or the voyage edges of the eyes. 
kingdom of spirit, where our departed dwell, nearer to us than ever, where the gods preside. Let us bless the invigoration of clean, fresh air, the gentleness of air that holds and slows the rain, lets it fall down, the shyness of air that never shows its face, the force of, of air in wall after wall of straining wind. In the name of air, the breeze and the wind, may our souls stay in rhythm with eternal breath. And I invite you to take another intentional in-breath and out-breath. <clears throat> By the working of this ritual, we invite the healing and helping and inspiring work of Breed and all the Aishita into our lives and through our lives for the healing of our Mother Earth, our broken and divided nation, and the individuals that we name in need of healing and help. Let us take this time and call the names of those we include in this working of healing and help. Betty McDonald. Valerie and Ron and Adam. Lily Bailey. Joanne Weiss's mother. Linda and Amanda and Samantha and Corey and Amethyst and Annie. Gail Calabrese, William Clark, Linda Ward, and Vicki Gentry. Vicki and Aaron. Cat. Sherry. We include all of these named and others that may still remain in the silence of our hearts in our working tonight. And now let us establish peace in our grove. Let there be peace at the Imbel Gate. Let there be peace at the Alban Eiler Gate. Let there be peace at the Beltane Gate. Let there be peace at the Alban Heroin Gate. Let there be peace at the Lunasad Gate. Let there be peace at the Alban Elowid Gate. Let there be peace at the Samhain Gate. Let there be peace at the Alban Arthurin Gate. Our grove is established in peace. Now I invite you as I read our grove's covenant to respond um, by repeating it back line for line. We are a community of Druids walking personal paths. We are, we are a community of Druids walking personal paths. We have a vital relationship with the Earth, our Mother. We have a, we have a vital, vital relationship, relationship with the Earth, the Earth, Earth our Mother. Mother. We celebrate the sun and its sacred days. We, we celebrate, celebrate the sun and its sacred days. Day. We hear the call to the inner life. We hear the call, we hear the call to the inner And we are weaving a wisdom that is both personal and communal. We are, we are weaving a wisdom that is both personal and communal. We each have special work that we do for ourselves, for others, and for our community. We each have special work that we do for ourselves, others, and our community. For others, for our community. 
We find our balance in the three, the sky, the earth, and the sea. We find, we our, find balance. our balance in the three, the sky, the earth, and the sea. We come to honor the three realms and the three cauldrons within us and the ancient ancestors and gods and spirits that attend us. I want you to take a moment now uh, to focus your camera, if you can, on your shrine to Brig, to Brig, and give us all a chance to look at what you have created before we continue with the ritual. And Lee, can you make it gallery view for a few minutes? Uh, yes, I have done that. Okay, cool. Wow. And if you don't have a shrine, that's perfectly fine. Look at somebody else's and just let that be your focus tonight. Shrines are never completely individual, even if they're meant to be. All right. So I invite everybody to take whatever offering you've brought. It might be milk. It might be bread. It might be butter. It might be some herbs. It might be flowers. Whatever that happens to be. Um, hold that in your hand. I'm going to walk over here and get mine. Mine is a offering of milk and let us make this offering to breed oh lady breed we the grove of sylvan sanctuary and our friends gathered here with us honor you this night with this offering we see and honor you the wild and mighty power of crafting we see and honor in you the wild and mighty power of healing and helping we see and honor in you the wild and mighty power of words crafted in poetry and proclaimed in justice for all beings on Mother Earth. We honor you in your triple powers and ask you to receive these offerings from us. And now I invite you to take whatever candle or flame is going to be on your altar and hold it. And allow the words of this poem to be the blessing for your candle. Let us praise the grace and risk of fire. In the beginning, the word was read, the sound was thunder. The wound and the unseen spilled forth the red weather of being. In the name of fire, the flame and the light, praise the pure presence of fire that burns from within without thought of time. The hunger of fire has no need for the reliquary of the future. It adores the eros of now. For the memory of the earth in flames that lick and drink the air is made to release in long enduring forms in the powder and ashes left for the wind to decipher. If they are intensified, the hunger of fire may the thought of death breathe new urgency into our love of life. As fire cleanses the drought, may we, the flame of passion burn away what is false. As short as the time from spark to flame, so brief may be the distance between the heart and being. May we discover beneath our fear embers of anger to kindle justice. May courage cause our lives flame in the name of the fire and the flame and the light. So with these words, light your candle. Let this flame be yours now, Lady Breed, and let its flame, every time we behold it, 
bring clarity, wisdom, and healing to our hearts and minds and bodies. And place it back on your shrine. With the sacred land always supporting us, the eternal sea surrounding us, the endless sky above us, the world tree, Bila, aids us to connect the realms through our bodies, bringing wisdom, light, and health. We acknowledge the three fires that give light, warmth, and life to all. First, to the spirits of this land and this place. Be with us and guide us. Be our hospitable hosts as we are your gracious guests. We acknowledge the second fire, the fires, the ancestors, the blood, culture, and spirit that we carry in our hearts and thoughts be with us and inspire us, be our excellent exemplars as we are your devoted descendants. We acknowledge the third fire, the great fire of the gods and goddesses, the powers and inhabitants of the other world. Be with us and enlighten us. Be our perpetual patrons as we are your constant clients. To the three fires, may we kindle you at all times may you never be extinguished. I now invite you all to participate in our three realms protection. It's something that can be done as an individual meditation and it's always something that we do in the opening of our rituals. So I invite you to either stand or sit comfortably with your feet <laughs> flat on the floor. And in this Three realms protection, we call upon the energies of sky, sea, and earth to create a dome of protection over us and all those who are participating in our ritual tonight and that we're holding in our ritual. Um, at the end of this three realms of protection, we will use the word emboss and create with our arms like this a, 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 a um, arch of energy that surrounds all of us. So gently close your eyes and imagine that your body extends from your feet deep in the core of the earth where everything is liquid and flowing and connects to all the oceans and waters of the sea as well. And your head and shoulders extend out into the universe among the cosmic powers and energies of the universe. Bring your attention to your breathing. And with your next inhale, extend your dominant hand up into the cosmos and wiggle your fingers around in cosmic sky energy. Use your imagination to get a handful of that and connect with it. And on your next inhale, draw it down through the top of your head into your forehead. Make a little circle of it there. Draw it down to your heart and make a little circle of it there. Draw it down below your belly button and make a little circle of it there. And breathe sky energy down into your body. And now with your next inhale, Reach down where your feet are into the core of the earth and connect with your fingers to sea energy, the molten interior of the earth, all the oceans and the rivers and the streams of this planet. 
And on your next inhale, draw that C energy up through your feet, through your legs. Make a little circle of it below your belly button. Draw it up and make a circle of it at your heart. Draw it up and make a circle of it at your forehead. And breathe in. Sea energy into your body where it mingles with sky energy. And now with your next inhale, extend your hands out to the horizons of this planet that we see and walk in every day. Wiggle your fingers around and make connection through your imagination with earth energy. And on your next inhale, draw that into your heart and make a little circle of it. Make a circle of it below your belly button. Make a circle of it at your forehead and breathe in earth energy. And now hold your hands at your heart and take three intentional breaths where all three of these energies flood into your body and commingle. On your next inhale, we're going to make this arch of energy up and over all of us with the word emboss. One, two, three, emboss. Now, with peace in our gates, with this dome of protection over us and around us. Let us return to the shrine of greed. Gaze upon your shrine, or if you don't have one, remember or recall in mind one of those that you saw on the screen. And as your, as your eyes connect to the shrine, as your imagination connects to the shrine, bring your attention also to your breath and allow the goddess breed to touch you and to connect with you and you with her. And having opened yourself to make connection with breed through your breath, Touch the bowl now that you have of water that will serve as the well of breed and let these words of these poem consecrate it as that well. Let us bless the grace of water, the imagination of the primeval ocean where the first forms of life stirred and emerged to dress the vacant earth with warm quilts of color. The well whose liquid night of clay, trusting and thrusting itself through the openings that would yet yield to its yearning until at last it arises in the desire of light to discover the pure quiver of itself flowing crystal clear and free through delighted emptiness. The courage of a river to continue belief in the slow fall of ground, always falling farther toward the unseen ocean. The river does what words would love, keeping its appearance by insisting on its disappearance. Its only life surrendered to the event of pilgrimage, carrying the origin to the end, seldom pushing or straining, keeping itself to itself everywhere all along its flow, all at one with its sinuous mind and utter rhythm, never awkward. It continues to swirl through all unlikeness with elegance. A ceaseless traverse of presence soothing on each side the still feels, sounding out its journey 
raising up a buried music where the silence of time becomes almost audible. Tide stirred by the eras of the moon draw from that permanent restlessness perfect waves that languidly rise and pleat in gradual forms of aquamarine to offer every last tear of delight at the altar of stillness inland. And the rain in the night driven by the loneliness of the wind to perforate the darkness as though some air pocket might open to release the perfume of the lost day and salvage some memory from its forsaken turbulence and drop its weight of longing into the earth and anchor. Let us bless the humility of water, always willing to take the shape of whatever otherness holds it, the buoyancy of water stronger than the deadening downward drag of gravity, the innocence of water flowing forth without thought of what awaits it, the refreshment of water dissolving the crystals of thirst. Water, voice of grief, cry of love, and the flowing tear. Water, vehicle and idiom of all the inner voyaging that keeps us alive. Blessed be water, our first mother. Take a moment now, dip your fingers into the well, place the drops of water on your body where you feel the need of it most, feel into what happens, and in your own way, offer gratitude to Lady Breed. Now perhaps you have a stone or a crystal on your altar to serve as a healing stone of Bridget. Take that stone in your hand, dip it into the well of Breed, pass it over the flame of Breed, hold it in your hands and make the intention that this stone become a stone of healing and inspiration from her. Seal that intention by blowing your breath on it and let the words of this poem seal the blessing. Let us bless the imagination of the earth that knew early the patience to harness the mind of time, waited for the seas to warm, ready to welcome the emergence of things dreaming of voyaging among the stillness of land. And how light knew to nurse the growth until the face of the earth brightened beneath a vision of color. When the ages of ice came and sealed the earth inside an endless coma of cold, the earth, the heart of the earth held hope, storing fragments of memory ready for the return of the sun. Let us thank the earth that offers ground for home and holds our feet firm to walk in space open to infinite galaxies. Let us salute the silence and certainty of mountains, their sublime stillness, their dream-filled hearts. The wonder of a garden trusting the first warmth of spring until its black infinity of cells becomes charged with dream than the silent, slow nurture of the seed's self, coaxing it to trust the act of death. The humility of the earth that transfigures all that has fallen out of outlived growth. The kindness of the earth opening to receive our worn forms into the final stillness. 
Let us ask forgiveness of the earth for our sin, all of our sins against her, for our violence and poisonings of her beauty. Let us remember within us the ancient clay holding the memory of seasons, the passion of the wind, the fluency of water, the warmth of fire, the quiver touch of the sun, and the shadowed sureness of the moon. That we may awaken to live to the full, the dream of the earth, who chose us to emerge and incarnate its hidden night in mind, spirit, and light. Take a moment to hold this stone, bring it to your third eye, bring it to your heart, and then bring it to any other part of your body that feels the need of it, and in your own way, offer, breed your gratitude. As there are three realms in which we do this work, there are four talismans and five directions. Let us go to them now and call on them for their help in this working. Ask you to stand or sit and face the western direction. I open myself to the west and in so doing to the other world and to wisdom. I seek here and call into this grove learning, teaching, foundations, judgment, counsel, stories, and the eloquence I need for my working, that we need for our work. We call upon the cauldron of the Dagda, and in it we see the generous nature of the universe, and we honor our obligation of hospitality. By the cauldron of the Dagda, we have all that we need, wealth of every kind, every soul to feed. Let the cauldron of the Dagda create compassion and communion among all the peoples of the world. Let us face the north. We open ourselves to the north and in doing so to the darkness that is the source of all that is. We enter into this darkness deeply aware of our struggles and the battles that we face in this life. May we not be afraid to name here and call into this grove for transformation, the battle, contention, hardships, strife, pride, rough places and losses, those things we go through before transformation. We call upon the stone of fall, and in it we know and accept that we rule our lives and choose our fates. No other may hold our sovereign sacred places. No other may reign over our spirits or the land that is our life in common with others. By the stone of destiny, we live what is true, with the earth and the shining ones in all that we do. But the stone of destiny cry out the truth that the world needs today. Let us face the east. We open ourselves to east and in doing so to the blossoming of all of the good things that emerge from the darkness. We seek here the prosperity good ways of being in the world, abundance, dignity, strength, wealth, and hospitality that we need for our working tonight. We call upon the sword of Nuada 
and in it we acknowledge the wounds we bear and seek to heal with new life. By the sword of Nuada, the torch burns bright. We make it our aim to live in the light. Let the sword of Nuada shine forth as a torch, bringing into the world healing and integrity. Let's face the south. We open ourselves to the south. And in so doing, to the music of the cosmos, let us become one here with the music, honor, fertility, games, passion, creativity, poetry, and all the gifts that flow in us and through us that we need for our working. We call upon the spirit of Lou, and in so doing, we see and appreciate our many gifts, and we choose to live and work with them for good in the world. We go forth this day by the spear of Lou, success in our speech, and the good that we do. Let the spear of Lou send out the justice that the world needs for this day. And now let us turn to the center. We open ourselves to the center. We honor the most sovereign and sacred space in this grove, the center found here in this cauldron and found here in our hearts. Let us know the sovereignty that is each life, which this work requires. We seek the power, dignity, stability, crafts, bounty, renown, and self-mastery that we need for our working. We call the world tree, Bila, and the sacred mother, Danu, and in so doing, the three realms of sky, sea, and earth. The cauldron gives, the stone makes strong, the sword lives, the spear makes song, the tree gathers the throng. Let the world tree live deeply rooted in the other world and extending the cover of its power to all that, li that lives on this earth. Let us call now upon the powers of the three realms to help us with our working. First in the Northeast, actually the Southeast, we open a portal to sky energy. Let the energy of sky help us with our working. And now in the west, we open a portal to the sea. Let sea energy help us with our working. And now in the north, we open a portal to the land, to the earth. Let earth energy help us with our working. And now I invite you to extend your hands toward the altar and with our imaginations and with our intentions to weave together all the things that we've called here, the peace of the gates, the power of the talismans, the power of our breath, the power of the elements, the power of our intentions. And weaving that together on the count of three, we send this out to all the places that it is intended for with the word emboss. One, two, three, emboss. Yeah. 
take a moment and feel into the working that we've just done here. Let us be open to messages and to feelings, to ideas that may suddenly come to us. The working of this grove ritual is done. Let any energy remaining from this working return to the earth, our mother, for her blessing and for all goodness. And so it is. Before we depart tonight, I'd like to offer a couple of thoughts to you. The shrine that you constructed to breed may be something that you wish to make permanent in your living space. And it may be something that is just for tonight. Either of those things is fine. That's left up to the best lights that you have in your situation. But I do urge us all to handle everything that has been a part of that shrine with respect, particularly the brought breed, the cloth that you may have set out to collect dew and rain over the last three nights. That is now charged with the intention of Breed's powers. The candle that you have dedicated to her can now be used the rest of the year and until it's consumed entirely. Um, the water that is in her well, handle it very carefully. Don't just throw it down the drain. Um, return it to the earth. Water your plants with it. You may put some of it in a small bottle with a few drops of alcohol or um, hard liquor to keep it um, preserved and use it through the year for anointing, for healings. The stone, uh, keep it perhaps on your altar or in a special place where you can take it out and use it for meditation and for healing work. Whenever you use these things, um, use them for yourself. Use them and offer prayers for others who have need. Imbolc celebrates the beginning of spring. It's the turning of the wheel, the return of new life, and it's the celebration of this community of ours. Um, I have the strong feeling that when we gather to do this work tonight, that we are opening portals, all kinds of portals for the sacred realm to do work through us in this earth. And our earth has many, many needs tonight. And I feel that flow very strongly. So I thank you all for being here. Oh, the last thing I was gonna ask is, uh, please take a picture of your shrine and post it on um, the, the EOTR uh, Facebook page. Um, and uh, that, that'll just be a wonderful way of sharing with people, if you feel comfortable with that. All right. Thank you, Lee, for hosting the session for us and helping all the tech ends come together. And thank you all for being here.